We'll begin with patient access to their own data and we'll see how the bar gets raised as the stages of meaningful use progress. We've discussed the requirements in the first two stages. In stage three, as proposed, 80% of patients must be able to access their records either through the VDT function or through an ONC certified API or Application Programming Interface. And 35% must have access to patient-specific educational materials. We mentioned the term API in our team project discussion near the end of Lesson 1 when we discussed FHIR. For all practical purposes, these two terms are probably going to be synonymous in healthcare. That is, FHIR will be the API used in healthcare. Unsurprisingly, Stage 3 also raises the bar on actual patient engagement. 25% of patients must access their records either through VDT or through an ONC certified API. 35% of patients must receive a clinically relevant secure message and of great interest with respect to patient phasing technologies such as those we'll discuss in Lesson 7. Providers must incorporate patient-generated data from non-clinical settings, such as home health, for 15% of their patients. This requirement clearly anticipates the increased use of mobile technologies and sensors in the home. Stage 3's proposed provider requirements also increase the percentage of e-prescriptions to 85% for eligible providers and 25% for eligible hospitals. They also require the use of five clinical decision support tools tied to four quality measures. And providers must use drug-to-drug -drug and drug-to-allergy interaction alerts during the entire reporting period. Hospitals must receive at least 80% of medication orders 60% of laboratory orders, and 60% of diagnostic imaging orders via computer-based physician order entry, although order entry by scribes, assistance to physicians who enter the information for them, does count toward these goals. Finally, Stage 3 has specific interoperability requirements. Providers must send an electronic summary for 50% of transitions of care and referrals. You recall that these are major sources of error in patient care. They must receive an electronic summary for 40% of transitions and referral. And providers must perform medication allergy problem list reconciliation for 80% of transitions of care and referrals. Finally, Eligible providers must electronically submit three out of five of the following reporting requirements. Immunizations, syndromic surveillance, this would be for infectious diseases, reportable conditions, case reporting, certain conditions that, that need to be reported to public health, public health registries uh, to keep track of, of certain diseases and conditions, and non-public health registries, such as those for cancer. Eligible hospitals must submit four from the same list to which electronic lab reporting is added.